Welcome to Cooking with Dr. Trindade. I was inspired to do this by several of my patients, uh, one of which is a physician who had never cooked before, as happens with some of my other patients, and said, could you just do some very basic videos for those of us who haven't cooked, but we're sort of inspired to after talking to you and trying to implement that 10 to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit per day. And your theory about how if you can get that, those amount of vegetables, you're in much sort of healthier stead, not just in COVID-19 times, but in general. Um, and then the next question was, well, how do I get all those in? And I'm constantly reminding them how you can make soups that are cream soups, but they're cream of vegetables. You're not adding any cream, dairy cream that is. And uh, so then the next thing was, well, if I could just have a short video and make it simple, just keep it really simple. So that really inspired me to do this and to keep it simple. Now, whenever you are cooking yourself, whether you're making soups or anything else, Please, just be creative. You can add a lot more things and um, you can experiment with different flavors. But for now, I'm keeping it really basic because I want to inspire those of you who think you can't cook to cook because you really can. So welcome and let's get on with cooking. Welcome everyone to Cooking with Dr. Trindade. And today we are making a little bit more complicated complex recipe but still easy to follow and it's going to be a lentil stew. We're going to have two cups of lentils. It'll take about half an hour to cook. We're going to use some very aromatic herbs, rosemary. You know rosemary is all herbs are amazing right but rosemary is one of the herbs that actually helps insulin get inside the cell. So the problem with type 2 diabetes is that we make too much insulin but the insulin doesn't function. We have too much insulin that can't get inside the cell. So this actually works at a receptor that allows insulin to get inside the cell. It's got polyphenols, great antioxidants, it tastes great and it smells even better. Then we're also going to have some, or in this recipe also calls for a uh, one cup of chopped celery. So we're just gonna chop it. I like things not too big, not too small, but you know, you can just chop it however you would like. And we're also going to have some onions. Now, onions I've already chopped up and you can rough chop them, you can make them pretty large. You can do just regular yellow onion, a white onion, or red onion. Now the red onion, has quercetin, which is an antioxidant that we have found actually helps our immune system fight COVID-19. So if you're able to, I just didn't have any, you could get the red onion. Also too, aside from quercetin, um, it's sometimes harder for us to get the reds and the purples in our diet. And we wanna eat like the rainbow because each color has a different type of phytonutrient. And when you try to get more color in your diet, you are getting all these different sources of antioxidants. So again, one cup of chopped celery, and then we're going to saute the celery and the onions, get it a little bit caramelized, and then we will be adding the water and the lentils. Now, a couple of things about lentils. Lentils are a great source of fiber, and remember I want you to have 10 to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit per day, and there you're getting more insoluble fiber. And then I also want 35 grams per day of soluble fiber. Lentils are a great way to do it. They're also low in carbs and pretty high in protein. There's many different types of lentils. This is sort of the more traditional ones that you think of, but there's also yellow lentils and red lentils, for, for instance. And the other thing um, that I really like about lentils is that they also have soluble fiber. And remember, I wanted those 35 grams you're gonna get from your nuts and seeds, things like flaxseed and chia seeds, because it's the soluble fiber that feeds the gut microbiota, which is, of course, lining our, it's in our guts, but in our intestines, better said, it's also where we have most of our immune system. So think about all those things you can add to your diet. They're going to make our immune system more robust and help us against viruses and in particular COVID-19 because that's sort of the um, one we're facing at this point in time. So again, I also use 
the little leaves. You know, I try to not waste. So I use the leaves uh, from the celery and you just well, chop it. And remember, how you chop is really up to you. We're going to go over to the stove and caramelize the onions with the celery and then we'll be adding the lentils and some water. So we have our onions and our, par and our celery chopped. I wanted to go over some of the other ingredients. So spicy tomato sauce. It really sort of makes this recipe. And then fire roasted tomatoes. Now this is a very amazing recipe because I talked already about the uh, fact that our lentils are going to have a lot of protein. And, uh, but this is also going to have a lot of color. So we're going to have the rosemary, which I'll get to in just a minute. We have lutein and lycopene in the tomatoes. And remember that lycopene, um, you can only get once you cook the tomatoes. So this is a really good way to have more access to it. But you'll get both lutein and lycopene. And now with the rosemary, uh, I'm just going to show you how you can just rough chop it. So usually what I do is I, I just basically take the little amounts, the little sprigs off. You could very well just pull them off. I like to just sort of scrape it going the opposite direction of the way they grow because it's just easy. And you know, rosemary is pretty aromatic, but it's also a strong flavor. So I like chopping it small and a little can go a long way. But if you're me or if you're anything like me, I love flavor. So I tend to put quite a bit. Usually uh, I'll put a little bit more than the recipe calls for. Just so be aware of that. You may want to use just a little bit less. And I like chopping it small because then you get all those oils released and not just for the smell, but also for the effect, right? That when you're then adding it to your food, you're going to get more flavor, but you also get release of more of those essential oils. And so you have more access to them, which are in most cases antioxidants that we want. And I'm just going to put this over. Now remember when you're chopping, you want to use not the blade, but the other section to sort of put your material down so you don't dull your blade. This recipe also calls for two to three carrots grated. So we're just going to grate those. And because this is all going to be going into the same pot, I'm not so worried about the fact that I just cut up the rosemary and now I'm doing the carrots. So we're going to grate the carrots, about two to three carrots. Now the carrots you're going to add after. They're not going to be uh, sauteed with the onions and the celery. So we'll grate those two to three carrots and then we'll start sauteing. Now just think, this is going to have the red from the tomatoes, the orange from the carrots. You have your celery, which also has lots of antioxidants and potassium. So this is going to be an extremely, extremely nutritious dish. And you could still add more vegetables if you'd like to it eventually. Even though this is a stew, you could decide that you want to add more. Okay, we're going to, I'm just going to finish grating these and onto the stove. So continuing on with our lentil stew, now you could use um, coconut oil, for example. I'm going to use ghee. Ghee is so good for helping repair your gut. And uh, who of us living in this toxic world don't have gut issues? So it's a half a cup, and I'm sort of eyeballing it. You could measure it out if you needed to, of ghee. We're going to let it melt, and then we're going to add the onions, and we're going to saute the onions and the celery, uh, as well as the rosemary. So I just like melting, waste not. <laughs> I don't like to waste anything, so I will let it melt slightly before I switch to using a wooden spoon. So that we have, see how we have most of our ghee melted. You could add it everything at once, but I just like to have it already warm. I always think that if, whether it, you're boiling something or you're going to saute something, if you have it sort of already either boiling or with the, um, in this case, already melted, it brings out more of the flavor. So here is our one teaspoon of chopped up 
wonderful smelling rosemary. And then we're going to add our onions. Now it's going to be a cup of onions. I chopped up a little bit more so you could just measure it. And also because I rough chopped it, sometimes I'll add a little bit more. And we're going to saute that with our amazing celery. And remember that's going to be also about, I'm going to do a cup to a cup and a half of your celery. We know a little bit extra is falling there. You know, baking, you have to be really precise. With cooking, depending on what you're making, you don't always need to be as precise, which works for me because when it comes to cooking, I'm more of a pinch of that and uh, a dab of that. Okay, so now we are just going to stir it. Stir it, that is. And we're going to actually let it get caramelized or a little bit um, golden. And it smells wonderful. Now, I'm, most things I like doing over medium to medium high heat because you don't want to burn and I'd rather that it took a little longer but I get all the nutrients from the different types of food. Okay so the onions are slightly caramelized. This is about what they would look like and now you could have just dumped the rest of things in here because I chose to start with a smaller pot then I'm going to actually dump this into the water that's been boiling with the lentils. So this is what we are going to do. I'm just going to remove this from the stove. And we'll bring our boiling water in. Now we're just going to dump this in. You could have also done it with a pot, but this is just how things worked out today. And now we're going to do our two cups of lentils that I've already washed. So we have our two cups of lentils. And sometimes if there's too many lentils still stuck on the side, what I'll do is I'll just add a tiny bit of water to wash out the rest. But in this case, I don't think we're going to need it. So we got our two cups of lentils and now we're going to add our amazing looking celery. And you can measure it or you could have already put it in there. So I'm just going to do a cup and a little bit of a, and a half, more or less. One and a half cups of chopped up celery. You could have had it in a bigger measuring cup, but I just wanted to show you that sometimes you just make do with what you have. And then we're going to add our stewed tomatoes. Actually, they are fire roasted tomatoes and our spicy tomato juice. So that's two cans and each of these is 14 and a half ounces, so about 28, 29 ounces. And can you just see that beautiful color? And if you make your own, like if you had your own tomatoes, you could do stewed tomatoes, you could do fire roasted. The fire roasted gives you that little bit more of a smoky flavor. And remember, this is a stew, so you could choose if you'd like it thicker 
or a little bit more watery and you can just add more water to it. And then we're going to do the one can of our spicy tomato juice. Now, if you, you could do it without it being spicy, but it's the spiciness that really makes this, this stew. And then the rest will just be you letting it boil. And it boils for about a half an hour because you want the lentils nice and cooked. And of course, when you put the lid on, you just want to make sure that you're leaving it to breathe so that there's a little bit of um, space. So you're leaving it a jar so it doesn't boil over. And I'm just going to use this lid because it's handy. And so you're just leaving a little bit of jar and you're going to cook it in about medium high heat. And then when it comes to a boil, you can lower it, the heat just a little bit because you're going to let it simmer. So continuing on with our lentil soup, these they have been simmering for about 28 minutes. And I don't, I didn't add the salt initially because I prefer to add it at the very end. And that's because, you know, there's a belief that perhaps the lentils don't cook as well when they have salt. And, you know, there's some schools of thought that they do, but I prefer to add the salt in the, in the end. I added a half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink sea salt. And remember, when you're talking about salt, a lot of times you'll hear doctors say you don't salt your food or decrease your amount of salt. They're mostly talking about sodium chloride, so your table salt that is only salty due to sodium chloride. This or any sort of um, sea salt will be salty from the other minerals, not just the sodium chloride. So it's actually healthy and we need it to keep our adrenals healthy. So I ended up doing three carrots because they were kind of small and we're adding that and then we're only going to let it cook for an additional um, about two to three minutes just to get your, um, basically to get your carrots a little bit more tenderized and just look at the goodness in this stew. You have the tomatoes, which are going to give you lycopene and lutein. You have the vitamin A or the beta carotene from the carrots. You have the protein from the lentils. You have potassium from them. You have the celery. You have the onions. And uh, remember, onions are very anti-inflammatory. They actually also help heal the gut. And we all, unfortunately, most of us are walking around with inflamed intestines because we live in a toxic world. You know, we been exposed to lots of, pesti lots of pesticides and we're constantly also being sort of uh, bombarded with a stress hormones, predominantly cortisol, which increases the permeability, makes you to have a leaky gut. So just think with one meal how far you're going. And then you're getting both your soluble fiber as well as your insoluble fiber. So I think I've been talking for about a minute, so we only have about another minute left. And I'm just going to show you how it looks, the finished product. So here is our lentil stew. It is now finished. I'm just going to pour it in a bowl so you get a look at this goodness. Isn't that just amazing? And you can see it here in the pot. Now I chose to do two cups of lentils, but that's because I'm used to always um, making extra and then freezing it. I always freeze in a glass. So you could very well have cut down the recipe to half and just do one cup. The reason I like to do uh, larger recipes is because I'm always planning ahead. And this way, you have enough to eat and even invite a few people over, uh, or you can then also use the rest to freeze. And I like freezing it in uh, like the mason jars, for instance. Just realize you have to leave a about an inch on the top because what freezes, or when you freeze food, it expands and you still get quite a bit of the nutritious uh, associated with a soup. Now, I like adding always a little bit of garnish, so I'm gonna do just a little bit of cilantro, and it's ready to go. Bon appetit, enjoy. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Dr. Trindade. And just remember the importance of food and how food communicates with our DNA. And just like the eating the wrong food can increase inflammation, eating the right foods can decrease inflammation and make our 
gut microbiome, our immune system healthier, more robust, more able to deal with all these foreign invaders. And don't forget about my rule of 10 to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit. And these soups go a long way to really showing you how you can incorporate that much, or so I should say that amount of uh, vegetables into your diet. Because when you're doing a cream soup, just in the one serving, you're actually getting four to five servings of the vegetable. Because remember, it's half a cup cooked is equal to one serving, or one cup raw, like a cup of arugula, or a cup of lettuce, or a cup of spinach. That would be one serving, whereas half a cup of cooked asparagus, or half a cup of cooked broccoli, or Brussels sprouts, for instance, that is a serving. But when you're doing the base of your soup as a creamed soup, a creamed vegetable soup, you're getting four to five servings per meal because you're getting all that amount in the base, or in the cream, plus you were adding, right? Whether we're adding cabbage, or spinach, or broccoli, or cauliflower, you name it, you are adding to it. So it's easy, if in one meal you can get four to five servings, in your next meal you can get another four to five, and then you have one meal where you may be getting one or two, maybe you're doing more of your fruits. So extremely, extremely important. And remember we're getting both soluble and insoluble fiber. It's true that your soluble fiber is more your nuts and seeds, things like your flaxseed meal, for instance, or your chia seeds, but you're also getting some of that, like in the asparagus, for instance, or in your carrots. You know, you, it's really important that we remember that it's the soluble fiber that really feeds our gut microbiota. So make it a great day. Please enjoy my recipes. And thank you so much for your participation and for your information. You inspire me, and I so, so appreciate that. My best to you.